Hello, everyone out there at Fandom. This is Jim Lee. I am the publisher and chief creative officer at DC, and I'm super excited to be hosting this panel about an upcoming new show called Superman and Lois. Today with me, I have Todd Helbing, who is the writer, numero uno badass on the production. <laughs> hey, Todd, good to see you Hello. again. Hello, hey, Jim, good to see you. And we have Clark and Lois. Well, we have Superman and Lois, Tyler Hecklin, and Elizabeth Tulloch. Welcome. Thanks, I'm excited. Yeah, good to be here. yeah, so let's just jump into it. We've got a lot of questions. I, I have my own personal questions as a huge fan of the show, of the characters, and then I believe some fans are going to ask some questions. You guys actually might be asking each other some questions here at the end, too. So everyone will, be, uh, everyone will get a participation uh, medal at the end. So <laughs> anyway, so Superman was obviously the first superhero, and uh, he's had some amazing TV show you know, over the years, TV shows over the years. As a kid, I, I watched the George Reeves black and white Superman one where he kind of jumped out a window onto a mattress on the other side. <laughs> yeah. uh, and obviously there've been shows since then. Todd, can you talk a little bit about how this show is gonna be different from previous uh, incarnations, adaptations, what you're doing differently that hasn't been done before and uh, just kind of, you know, tease it out a little bit. I know you can't share too much right now. The main way that we're gonna make this a little different is that uh, Clark and Lois are married in this version. Um, and they're not only married, they have two teenage boys. Um, what? Yes, <laughs> These guys two look teenage way boys. too young to have teenage kids. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it, it, we lean into that because Clark Kent does not really age that much. Um, you, gotta, so, you gotta look close, but the, the grays are coming in. <laughs> they're, they're there, don't worry, they're there. Yeah, when Tyler's gonna be shaving, he's gonna be clean shaving every, no. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, as a father, um, as uh, the, the, who happens to have two boys, um, that felt like a really great way um, to bring in some personal experience. And, um, you know, just to tell really a, a story that is as grounded as it can possibly be to have Superman in it. And as a couple, um, you get we really get to lean into, you know, Clark and Lois um, not being Superman in the most uh, um, or famous journalists in the world, but really as parents, like what is that like when you have jobs like that, which can really, uh, a lot of people can relate to nowadays, you know, to uh, a lot of families that have two working parents and all the complexities and, and um, uh, difficulties that come with having jobs like that. Um, and then with two boys, um, how, you know, as parents, uh, speaking from experience, my, my boys are wildly different. And so we wanted to present two kids that had completely different um, skill sets. And how do you deal with that as parents? And I don't know if you can, or if you feel comfortable uh, revealing this just yet, right? But there's a reason where, uh, in which Clark and Lois moved back to Smallville. Is that, that's a big piece of... Y yeah, I'm not going to give a reason yet, but... Um, oh. The story of Superman has taken place in Metropolis for very long. Obviously, there was a Smallville series, um, but I came from a small town in the Midwest, and um, the town uh, that I grew up in had a, a business leave um, that sort of affected every, everybody in the town, and the town started to slowly dry up, and it felt very um, current with, with uh, recent years after 2008. So we wanted to tell a story where you have the parents after this tragic event happens, move back to Smallville and really um, find that it's easier to raise kids maybe in a place where life isn't so hectic as it is in Metropolis. Let's talk a little, I have a really nerdy question, right? So at the end of the crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, they basically brought Superman and Lois into Earth Prime with all the other characters. It, what role is that gonna play in your future telling, uh, in your future storytelling? Well, for all the fans that watched, you know, at the end of the last, or the beginning of the last crossover, uh, Clark and Lois had a little infant boy named Jonathan, and uh, the worlds merged and everything gets rewritten, and the end of the crossover is uh, Lois calling Clark saying that, she, that he has to get home because there's a problem with the boys. Um, so we, we, we took Crisis as an opportunity to really age up and change things for, for them as parents, age up the boys or create two boys, fraternal twins, and, and, and make them teenagers when things really get complicated for parents. So I think um, just crisis in general really gave us an opportunity uh, to start with a, a, a blank slate. 
and tell, you know, it, it, tell the story in a way that we couldn't have otherwise. Tyler, Bitsy, how do you guys feel like, you know, before you're Superman, you're the ultimate hero, right? Uh, <laughs> Lois Lane, you are the ultimate, most famous journalist in all the world, right? And now your parents to these kids, like, you know, the judging that will be going on <laughs> in terms of your parenting styles, like it's a whole different dimension, right? Not only do you have to be amazing superheroes, amazing journalists that have to uphold their ethics and you know, fight for truth, on top of it, you now have two teenage boys that are running amok in a small town. Like, um, is there stuff that you can draw upon to kind of help tell this story from your own childhood or, or uh, your extended family? Well, I mean, I, I am a mom. I have a 17 month old and I feel like she's already judging me on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just kind of used to it. Uh, she's a big fan of my husband right now in particular. She's, a, she's definitely a daddy's girl. Um, but I do think that it, it's, it's one of the things, that, you know, especially about Lois is that she doesn't really compromise her sense of self or her goals. And so I think one thing that I think she butts up against and obviously uh, Superman does too is you know, being really dedicated to our careers and our jobs because we're doing this for good and we believe in what we're doing. And Lois wants to change the world with with words and, and Superman does it with his power, but also, you know, how much is that alienating and our, our kids and how good can we can you really be at your job if you have two teenage boys who are hormonal and who each have very disparate needs? Um, so I think that's part of what, for me anyway, was really compelling and was so exciting when I found out that it was going to be older kids, uh, like teenagers, because they, they are, it is so complicated and they are going to be going through a lot. And, you know, I've read two scripts now and, and I find the, the storyline with the sons really, really compelling. Yeah. They definitely yeah. get harder as they get older, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have the I don't have the direct experience of parenting yet. Um, you know, I have six I have six nieces and nephews now. Uh, my older brother and sister have, have gone ahead and taken care of that for mom and dad. So uh, I've been at least kind of seeing it from the uncle lens uh, and watching them grow up. But just the idea, I, I think noticing my dad uh, in you know how often he was gone at work. He's a doc. Uh, he's a doctor. Works in the emergency room. He had a private practice, and so balancing that with having four kids at home uh see to see him do that and being older now and realizing how much time is taken up by working towards a career by providing and just doing those things even just for myself uh it's it's a perspective shift uh for me to look back at how he was able to do that so those are things that i'll definitely be drawing on just to see you know how you're able to to wear both hats in that situation um to you know to be a good parent and to be uh, a working parent. It's a it's a tricky situation. So it's no small feat. So so Tyler, do you feel that extra level of pressure? I would imagine just playing Superman in general, you have to, you know, embody all these like virtuous you know aspects, and and I, I'm sure people come up to you all the time and call you Superman. I I, I assume like when you get that call, like does your life change? Well, I, I guess after the first episode airs, it changes, right? I mean, can you talk a little bit about that kind of change in in your career and life? I think it's just, um, there's, a, there's a heightened awareness. Um, I think, you know, when we were on the set, there was one moment that always stands out. We were on a set and I'd been on sets before where there's fans around and they want to meet the actors or something, but to be there and to be in the Superman suit and to have a parent bring their five and six year olds up to the thing to say, hey, can they meet Superman? That's a thing where you do realize that, you know, at that point, you know, they might know who, the parent might know who you are as the actor, but to the kids, Sure. You're just Superman. You're wearing the suit and that's all, that's all they know. So that's, I think that's the thing that changes the most is just that awareness of when you're, when you're around kids. And I think that's what's so great about this character and what I love about it um, is that what he stands for uh, really just kind of grabs onto such an impressionable audience. You know, these kids who look at him as, as a hero and all the things that he stands for. Uh, it's something that does make me really excited about getting to play this character. You know, I don't know if you guys were, uh, you know, fans of DC Comics or Superman and Lois before you guys got these assignments. I assume you've, you know, you've been to Comic-Con now, uh, busy you were talking about how your heart starts pumping before they call <laughs> your name and you go out on that panel. Can you share some thoughts about 
Comic Con or some stories about Comic Con and 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 um, sort of interacting with the passionate fan base that that are here watching us, uh, you know, online. I remember the first time we did Comic Con for Grimm because Grimm premiered in the fall of 2011. We they showed the whole pilot and because it hadn't aired yet, people kind of didn't know who we were for the most part. So we were, that was my favorite year because we were able to kind of walk around and interact with people. I always enjoyed it. It was a very long day, but I remember my favorite, my favorite time was the first time we went when we were actually like able to kind of get into it with people. Yeah, it's, it's just a different experience. I think when, when you meet somebody who's a fan of a different show, it's it's uh, it's a completely different experience than when someone comes up that's a fan of Superman, and I think a lot of that has to do with the legacy of it as well. You know, it's just it's such a it goes back so far, and there's been so many people to do it. It's this long-standing tradition of this character and what he means. Uh, you know, he, the, it might mean one thing to the five-year-old you're meeting, but to their dad or to their mom who also knew the character when they were five, and it's still a fan. You, 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 it's such a wide range of impressions that have been made over the decades that it's just, uh, it's, it's a different kind of experience. Right. I would think Superman feels particularly conflicted because obviously he has the responsibilities to his family, the woman he loves, the, the children he's trying to raise, but he's also, he's, he's owned, he's, he belongs to the world, right? He's the world's champion and that demand and need for that type of character in the world takes him away from his family, right? So he's gotta be extremely conflicted in, his personal responsibilities to his family, and then this other responsibility to, to really kind of help lead the world to a better place, right? I feel like there's an interesting thing going on, um, and it's not like it's a, a brand new situation, but just over the years, it's been this thing where what, what we do in our professional lives and our work lives does require so much more. And I think that that's something about Superman is that there is so much needed of him. It's, it's when do you turn it off? When is it okay to turn it off? When is enough enough? Because you do have other things in your life that might be in a different way. It's not as macro, it might be more micro. It doesn't make it any less important. These are the people that count on you for something that only you can fulfill within that structure of a family. So it's, uh, it is, it's one of the things I'm most excited uh, about, uh, you know, diving into in this show is as a parent, how do you balance that need of something that you, you have spent your young adult years and the rest of your adult life before you were a parent, putting all your effort into how do you know how and when to scale that back to put that time into the family. And so it's, it's, a, it's a unique challenge that I'm sure everybody faces uh, going through that. So I'm excited at least to tap into that part of it. So on top of uh, this challenge between, you know, this personal challenge uh, between uh, Clark and Lois and their family, Todd, can you talk a little bit about uh, as they go to Smallville, kind of the other elements of the other uh, members of the supporting cast of Superman that you kind of want to activate and bring into the fold. You know, we were talking the other day about how love triangles are really important in the Superman mythology, you know, starting with the first, which is Superman, Lois, and Clark, right, before right. Lois figured out his secret identity. Yeah, well, I think it, it, it's fun to, when, when they go back, that Lana Lang is there, you know, he, uh, Lana was Clark's first love. And I think it's an interesting dynamic as an adult, how you deal with that relationship, you know? Um, and, you know, I, it, it can't be Superman. We don't want Clark Kent ever having an affair on Lois. There's not that situation, that's never gonna happen. You know, he's, he's as <laughs> good as they get. she shouldn't know that. <laughs> you know well, I mean? yeah, you can, right. It's also like, we don't want, we don't want like, you know, Lois and Lana brawling in the, you know, but, but, but that, that dynamic as an adult is really interesting to us. You know, um, those feelings are impossible to ignore. And I think that that's a real thing for some people, um, especially when kids are involved. And then to see her husband and, and her kids and that dynamic, there's a couple of people that, a couple of characters that we invented, um, Kyle Cushing, her husband, and Sarah Cushing, um, who it be, it gets it's sort of wrapped up with the boys and then they have their own love triangle. Um, and then a, a, a character that I think is really interesting is General Lane, Lois's father, and his relationship with the two of them. You know, he sees Superman as, he's a, he's a very military guy. So he, he sort of looks at, at Superman like his soldier. And so, and, and his relationship with Lois is a little fraught. 
um, because of the way that he took his job when he was a parent versus the way that Clark is, is, is doing his job. So all of that messiness is really fun. It, it's not just about the ultimate superhero and Lois Lane leading a family and those kind of uh, challenges and responsibilities. There's true superhero action as well. You know, it's more than yeah. just a show about this new, unusual nuclear family stuck in a small town and them having to figure out those issues. It is at its heart a show about superheroes and supervillains too. Yeah, so I think, look, there's a lot of set pieces, there's a lot of heroics, um, but to us, what's just as interesting is when Superman goes out and saves the day or he's fighting a, a villain or he's stopping a nuclear reactor from exploding, Lois is out there hunting a different sort of villain and, and using her superpowers to be just as effective. And, and you see them as a team, kind of this unstoppable force, which is, which is uh, a lot of fun to play. So Todd, um, I know you have two young boys, and apparently they draw a lot, which is awesome. But I heard that they, they struggle a little with like drawing Superman's shield, right? Yeah, yes. It, it, they're, they're, both, they're both very artistic. Um, but yeah, that is the big, that's like the thorn in their side. All right, so I, I'm going to just share with you a, a little secret that I, I, another artist told me back in the day, uh, an artist named John Byrne, who's like one of my favorite uh, comic book creators. He had a very long run on, on Superman. Um, but he basically looked at it as a diamond, obviously the, the, the symbol with two fish swimming in opposite directions. So you're drawing the negative space rather than the S. If you try to draw the S, it's really challenging, but if you just draw the two fish, the S miraculously appears. So I'm gonna see if I can do that here. Awesome. So wait, we're gonna do it, right? Are <laughs> yeah, we all yeah, doing yeah. it? You guys have, awesome, yeah, awesome. Absolutely, yeah. oh, oh, all right. I got my, yeah. my kids crying. Oh, yeah, this is fantastic. A draw line. All right. Now, All right. now, now the good. pressure's on. I gotta. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Tyler. You guys have to come through for me here. All right. All right. All right. Do you have paper too? Yeah, oh, we good. got some. Man. Oh, fantastic! All right, I've got my board here. All right. So, um, the actually the hardest part now it will probably be to draw the diamond, right? So, do that. So you draw the draw the diamond first. Yeah. It's okay. All right. Okay. And now, and now yeah. here's the, here's the part. Uh, you draw a fish, and then you draw the other fish. Right. <laughs> okay. So, and then right above that fin, you you draw like a little diamond shape there. <laughs> oh my God, mine's so bad. <laughs> and another Mine's little diamond underneath idea. that bottom fish. Okay. Right. Is that it? Is that the thing? So this is the starting point. Obviously, it's not quite the S symbol, but um, what it gets you to is a, a point where you go, okay, now I can see that S, right? And so if I'm doing this in pencil, you come all the way down here and you just basically hook it up like that, right? And then this, this S, it actually goes like this, right? I should have brought an eraser. Like a better eraser. <laughs> uh, I'm, drawing, I'm drawing with a Sharpie. So I'm just going to fill this in so you can kind of see the S kind of appear. They, they actually look more like whales than fish. This top one looks more like a whale. That looked pretty close. Oh, and then, and then a, another little line goes up here. Okay. There. Okay, okay. hang on. Almost there. I, I'm so <laughs> curious to see what you guys have drawn. <laughs> It really helps mentally to think about the negative shapes rather than the S that you're drawing itself. This is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, that's not great. Bad. That's oh not, my God. That's not great, Todd. Jim. No. That's, no, that's, that's fantastic. I think I was off to like a real hot start and then, and then that, that <laughs> bottom, the bottom fish got me. Oh, wow. Awesome. Oh, oh this is great. Wow. And you have the colored markers too. It's fantastic. Yes. I, have, I stole my daughter's crayons. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Better than her eating them. This is going to have to improve over time, but. Let's see. I don't know what happened. Where, where, where it happened? Where'd it go? Dude, that's awesome. These are both. That's great, man. All of them. All of them. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Here, let's, let's put oh, them all up. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, hang there. on. I see now. Hold it up. What? You didn't see the fish before? <laughs> no, you I saw the fish. fish before. I see this thing okay. outside. There we go. My proportions are really uh, off. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Ta -da. 
Tyler, you, yeah. your bottom was like a little guppy. It's a little <laughs> yeah, a little oh, goldfish. Right. All right, so go if, you know, if you know this, every time you see the Superman symbol, you, it's hard not to see the fish in, in, yeah. instead of the S. Anyway, but hopefully uh, kids and fans all around the world will be sitting down trying to put this all together and hopefully they can share some of this on social. All right, so Todd, we have some uh, fan questions. What Superman story stood out the most to you uh, that made you want to play these characters? Was there a, a seminal moment where you were first introduced to the Superman mythology that made you a Superman or Lois? or DC fan? You know, it's funny. It's not that there's like one particular moment. I, I've never seen the TV shows. I've seen uh, snippets of it, but I've never seen, uh, I worked with Erica Durant last year. She's amazing. I love her, but I haven't seen Smallville. Um, I have, I've seen the Christopher Reeve films with Margot Kidder and I love them so much. And I think one of the things that I always found really memorable was this she didn't know who he was, but like on some level, did she? There was something about the way I felt like Margot Kidder played it, or maybe I'm projecting, where it feels like, and part of the reason they're such a good couple and they love each other so much is that she just kind of gets him. And, and you know, I just remember moments where she was kind of looking at him quizzically and I'm like, wait, does she know? Or does she just sort of <laughs> understand? something about him and and who he is and and what he represents and like you know going back to what i was saying earlier on i think part of the reason lois is the perfect woman for clark is that she gets why superman is so important for the world and she is happy to make the sacrifice uh, as far as one-on-one -on -one time and family time as a result uh, for me, uh, I would say kind of the same thing. Uh, it wasn't a particular story. Uh, really, for me, what it was, was when I went and met uh, with Greg originally to do uh, the couple episodes of Supergirl in the first place. Um, you know, I sat and watched the, the first season of Supergirl, and I think it hit me at the right time in life. And I think there was an environment at the time that felt like we needed a little bit of hope. We needed a little bit of optimism. Um, and I feel like I had also just kind of been coming out of a, a cynical phase of life. I kind of, I went through those years and, and tried seeing the world through that lens and I didn't enjoy it very much. So, uh, for me, it was just kind of seeing that show and seeing that, um, I think I felt as if it was a chance for me to jump into something hopeful, uh, and optimistic. Um, I think what also goes along with the reality of the situation of where we are today is that you do need hope that we will get to the other side of it and that we will find a way through it. So um, kind of credit that to that first season of Supergirl, watching those guys. All right, guys, uh, a couple fan questions. Uh, start first with, who are the Superman and Lois in your own lives? And how do your Superman and Lois influence your portrayal of your respected characters in this universe? I would say just, you know, for what influences me, playing Lois Lane, especially playing Lois Lane right now at a moment in history where the profession of journalism is a little bit under siege, is just every journalist ever who is busting their butt right now and uh, coming under heavy fire from both sides and a lot of media scrutiny and everything and, and uh, the fact that they're still showing up and doing their jobs. Um, yeah, I, 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 I second, I second that with you. Um, I think, uh, I think anyone who strives to tell the truth in the face of whatever consequences that holds, uh, I, I think those are some of the most, um, incredible, respectable people. And, um, uh, I think Lois falls in that, in that category. Uh, for me, anyone can be Superman. I think what makes Superman Superman to me in my eyes is that someone who, without fail chooses to do the right thing and all the good that they can do. And that's really what it is. And whether that's, you know, saving one person from crossing the street, whether that's saving a falling skyscraper as Superman would do that saves everyone in the building. It's, it's, it's the quality of the efforts and the works, not the quantity. It's, it's not how huge they are. It's just how impactful they are to one person. So Tyler Hecklin, two questions. What was it like putting on the suit for the first time? And the second half of the question is, are we going to see Superman get a new suit in this new version? Uh, <laughs> yes, I think putting the suit on for the first time, I, everything about this, there's been so many times where there's been kind of a surreal moment, but I think putting on the suit for the first time 
was the most surreal moment just because any other time that you would be wearing that suit is probably on Halloween and that's about it. Otherwise, I don't know why you're putting it on or why you have one in the first place. Uh, so I think putting it on and actually seeing it and realizing this is not just for a day, you know, we're going to shoot this, we're going to tell the story that involves this character. Um, I, I don't think that it's sunk in and if it hasn't by now, it probably never will to some weird degree. But I think being the one wearing it as opposed to seeing someone else in it uh, is a different, it's a different experience. Like the symbol itself is so incredibly iconic that I remember when I first started shooting on the show and it was uh, Elseworlds and there was a scene with Oliver and, and the Flash and, and Grant Gustin and I both were like, we couldn't keep it together when you're wearing a plaid shirt and when you rip it open and it's the S, like we probably had to do that take quite a few times because everyone's reaction and like Lois should be used to this and even I was like <laughs> <laughs> that was a really funny day on set but that that scene I remember that when we did it and I ripped the shirt up that's why I said it's different I think when you're doing it as opposed to watching someone else do that or being in that because when I do it there's almost a moment of it's been done before and, and it, it, you know what it means so you're like is the way I'm doing it weird is it is it, is it, does it look right I don't I don't really know uh, but I remember Grant on that take, it was the push in and thank God, like the camera pushed in and it, it had gone just into the S by the time he did this. But when I ripped the shirt open, I just remember Grant going oh! off screen, <laughs> <laughs> this, this audible inhale. And it was <laughs> the funniest thing. I mean, it's gotta be, it's gotta be strange though. Are we going to see a new though. suit? Oh, are we going to see a new suit? Um, ah, Todd, are we going to see a new suit? So, okay. I, I'll take the heat for this one, uh, you know, it's like originally you came on for the crossovers and that suit just wasn't built to sustain a series. And I think just in everything that we were talking about earlier, you know, it gave us this fresh slate. Yeah, let's, let's make a new suit. So um, there's gonna be a really badass Superman suit in this show um, that I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. I'm excited too. So there you have it guys. Um, I just want to thank Todd and Tyler and Bitsy for participating in this panel talking about Superman and Lois and uh, for humoring me and drawing the Superman shield. It was really lovely seeing you guys work outside of your comfort zone, bringing artistic <laughs> creative abilities to the fore. And uh, we're, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing the show debut on the CW next year. Thanks so much, Jim. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Thank Bye. you.